It's 3.22 a.m. in Amityville, and you're listening to Night Call. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Night Call, a podcast for your strange days and lonely nights. I'm Molly Lambert in Los Angeles, and joining me as always is... Tess Lynch, and over in New York we have... Emily Oshida, and Rachel a special Handler. guest oh, this week. <laughs> I don't know, no, she's so excited, I she's ready wait. to go. Uh, Rachel Handler, <laughs> my editor and colleague at New York Magazine and Vulture, um, a very funny and great writer, and just all around great co-worker. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for that review. <laughs> and friend. Rachel and I also used to work together and I will double confirm she is also a great co-worker and wow, friend and writer. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to bring this to my raise meeting. <laughs> um, great performance review. We were going to start, sorry, inside jokes about the magazine you guys work at. <laughs> you raise your consciousness? Yes. Um, Let's cut off. They just um, read your aura. They're like, your aura seems good. Good yeah. work. It's a, it's a nice blue year for you this year. Speaking, uh, speaking of auras and crystals, we talked about crystals last week. We got a lot of space news this week. Yeah. So much space news. This is yeah. both crystal news and space news, which makes it perhaps the most exciting new age news. Lucky us. <laughs> uh, which is that I read a story on live science, my favorite science story aggregator, uh, about how the sun is going to turn into a crystal when it dies. How? Before, and why? <laughs> well, <laughs> funny you should ask. <laughs> Just the sun is going to die. Hold on, I'm trying to pull up the story. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that in the short version <laughs> that I remember vaguely. Um, there was a new study that was published that said that white dwarfs, which is – I think we knew that the sun would turn into a white dwarf. White dwarfs turn into solid crystal cores that are made of oxygen and carbon. And then when they're really, really old, this is the discovery. They're just like a, a an entire crystal star. Huh. So it's not like a diamond, though. It's like a – or is it like compressed carbon that just turns into – I mean, I think that's sort of what it's like, which again is what we were saying last week. Like that to me is what is amazing about crystals is you're yeah. like the earth – the earth squished an egg <laughs> that is like a weird <laughs> – this, this is scientifically backed up. The earth made an that's egg. scientists explain that's it. That's what yeah. we call stones and gems or earth eggs. Um, there was oh. like a footnote about how – the age that we think stars are might be wrong because as they turn into white dwarfs, they start cooling and that like kind of distorts what their age and is. And as we've learned from all the statistics are fake about everything. Exactly. So, yeah. right. right. Don't well, trust any that is, numbers. Well, that is true in science, though. It's like old beliefs continually get replaced with like we know more now. Right. And, yeah. Like there's something smaller than a molecule or whatever, an mm-hmm. act smaller than an atom. This also says that the skies are probably already filled with these crystal stars because it means that there's just a lot of stars that like already burned out and are dead and are just floating around being crystals in the sky. This is all very, very sailor moon. (laughs) Yeah. What what does it mean to be a dead star? It means it's just burnt out. It's done. Its energy has been depleted. It's, it's like a plant is, that's dead, really a, but it's, it's like alive, a husk. Though, is it? You know, but it's still, like a plant. How long does <laughs> it accent? exist in its dead state? Forever? I yeah, it just like floats. It's like an it's like a rock. Then it becomes like a space rock. But I don't know so if it, it never really dies. There's a I, lesson. Well, there. it's just no, a yeah. different form. <laughs> it it evolves a into form. a different form. Uh, also, before the sun turns into a crystal, it's going to turn up into a a giant red giant and swallow the earth well yeah but right you know which we i mean Looking old forward. news it's just it's or just fake news maybe. i find I mean, it comforting to think about me too that's really soothing actually we should be so lucky to last long enough <laughs> to get swallowed up by the sun i can't speaking wait speaking of which this is slightly related but do, speaking of science just reevaluating everything did you guys see that article about how like the sun is actually good for you now and sunscreen is killing people yes what? I no, I loved this article. It was awesome. I loved it, it was so like, much. 
It said that was it written by Russians? Of, <laughs> no, it was like this one guy who was like, you know what? I know like all the dermatologists are going to hate me, but I'm just going to say there are all of these studies that show that avoiding the sun is as bad as smoking. Yeah. Well, I think you need a little vitamin D. Yeah, in your you life. need yeah. a lot of and and taking vitamin D as a supplement isn't effective. It doesn't help, and you can die of um, all these things that the sun yeah. can cure. And it really validated so my glad teen you read this, habits. Yeah. You still got to put on sunscreen on your face, of course, after, of course, on your you, face. But you still go outside, right? I think they're saying like the lifestyle of avoiding sun is right. Very Don't be a vampire. Yeah. Don't be a vampire. Oh, Don't be a goth be a va- basement team. <laughs> but that's uh. like what those people are into, right? Right. right. Yeah. Nu- nutrient depleted. Long. Yeah. <laughs> they said that something like three people out of every hundred thousand people who get skin cancer will die, whereas the odds of dying from a, a disease that's related to avoiding the sun is much higher. So it's basically like you should not totally avoid the sun and you should see a dermatologist. So Wait, what's can... bad about sunscreen? Because it, it blocks the vitamin It blocks the sun. Yeah. If you go uh, out in the sun the and you're wearing D? sunscreen, yeah. yeah, it does. No way. It, yeah. No, it does. Read the thing. It's Guys, true. Guys, read the thing. <laughs> you got to read the thing. <laughs> was this on a Gwyneth Paltrow website? No, it was a real thing. It was. I said it to my everyone I know because everyone likes to give me shit because I was a young lifeguard who right. just tanned my face off. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll cite that source in our show notes and make sure. I feel like yeah, the yeah, lobby for Big Sun Gwyneth. may have paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> Big Sun. <laughs> I mean, it is the biggest. We were talking about Big Moon because um, we were talking about the Super Blood Wolf the super Moon that's blood, coming up. Super and Wolf Emily, Blood Moon, I believe. Wolf Blood. Emily was like, what's up with the silly moon names? And a bunch of people were like, well, actually, well, they're very no, old. I was glad that people clarified this. I yes. mean, to be fair, I was asking about the whole name because there is such a thing as like obviously a super moon. We know it's about super moons. We know about blood moons. I had personally never heard of a wolf moon, but some people are saying this is an indigenous thing. Other people seem to say it's like an old world thing, a wolf moon. There Just, are. Actually, well, as somebody who well, bought actually. the 2019 <laughs> Witch's Almanac. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, not that long ago. All right. <laughs> There's like a bunch of different names for every moon, and most of them are like indigenous names that then American colonizers like kept you know okay. so things like the corn moon right have you mm-hmm. ever heard the wolf sing to the blue corn moon <laughs> is a thing sorry please i, I thought you were have you ever heard us, no the wolf sing to the wolf moon because <laughs> well, the wolf true. moon is one of the moons there's a worm moon that is the number one moon in my book why there's a worm the moon because moon why is it a worm? Because it's when it's awesome. It's because it's when the worms start coming out Ew. of the of dirt. The yeah, it's like the end of winter when the worms start mm. coming. Do There's they get drawn out I was just ask. by the gravity of the moon, like the tide? Yes, <gasps> exactly. They probably do. That's There's no cool, way. Actually, I changed. No, my mind. it's all it's all super cool and uh, and awesome and. Well, we do have I will a bring more moon info. We every have week. a super wolf blood moon coming up in Feb. No, it's in January because it's the first full moon of the year. I think it's the twentieth. It'll be around when this episode airs. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. around. So, It'll be around I think it's when this Saturday. episode oh. airs. Yeah. Uh, so check it out. Keep keep your eyes out for the Super Wolf Blood Moon. Oh, you know what um, happens right after that? A night call live show uh-huh. on February fifth. Oh, I Not wish that could- long. I wish we could Afterwards. gaze at the super wolf blood moon while at our <laughs> DJ set, but alas. Uh, one more bit of uh, uh, space news. It's been a really amazing last few months in general for uh, SETI news. Uh, again, search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Um, but the the most recent uh, thing that I was so I was so glad that you guys sent this to me. I had at least two other friends who sent this to me. Um, that there have been these uh, series of radio bursts uh, detected by uh, radio astronomers or radio telescopes uh, that so far they have not ruled out uh, could be coming from extraterrestrials. But they're, it's repetitive. That's like the reason that it's noteworthy. It's like a signal that's now repeated itself. Um, nobody knows what's in the signal yet. Nobody's like... I, I don't think anybody has tried to dig into it yet, but it did get me um, reading about um, the theory about gamma ray bursts as a possible um, 
uh, mode of communication from extraterrestrials because uh, those happen every once in a while. And apparently in a gamma ray burst, you can pack the entire information, like the sum total of all information on planet Earth <gasps> could be packed into a gamma ray burst. Whoa. So a very advanced civilization could hypothetically send everything about themselves to us in one single like millisecond. What are um, you talking? So they're basically <laughs> oh beaming, they're beaming us their hard drive. <laughs> yeah, so we can't. It's, it's very possible. Yes. Why can't we look at it? <laughs> Uh, we we too dumb. <laughs> well, to 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 be accurate, these are not gam- gamma ray bursts. These are uh, radio bursts. These were discovered on a radio telescope. After you go into this, the same um astronomer guy, Avi Loeb, who who was kind of opining about the fast radio bursts um being meaningful. Today there was something about this potential spaceship called Oumuamua. Oumuamua. Yeah, and he's the same oh, guy. Yeah. He's just like I. And I'm working at Harvard now. I'm just going to, like, speak my mind about the aliens. So I can't remember this is if this is the same guy who I heard on an interview on Big Picture Science, which is the uh, podcast of the SETI Institute, which I am a proud subscriber of. <laughs> Hell uh, yeah. But he... I think he was talking about um, Oumuamua, which is, like, this weird, long sort of um, structure that, that a lot of scientists are saying doesn't look like it's naturally occurring. Just the shape of it does not look like the way that asteroids or um, there's the word for asteroids that aren't in the asteroid belt. But it's like it doesn't look naturally occurring. And he was hypothesizing that it was a solar sail that had like made its way to us from some other civilization Ooh. like like you know, <laughs> billions of years ago or something because uh, it's just this like long skinny thing uh it, it yeah but it was uh i think that was discovered a couple months ago um what are the odds it's the monolith from 2001 i mean it kind of looks <laughs> it like it be. i mean it's not it's not as clean but it's 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 long and well skinny once we like get that, it yeah. and like you know sand it up <laughs> once, once uh, we producer ben just that ride. just held up his jewel to uh <laughs> to suggest that maybe the aliens have been vaping uh, <laughs> the aliens maybe every time you jewel it's like a gamma ray and yes. you learn something about an ancient civilization exactly you download an entire ancient alien civilization <laughs> there's that one bead pen brain. that vibrates maybe it's just it's vibrating the gamma rays right to the dome <laughs> to the dome <laughs> But I think that the deal with Oumuamua, which is, um, it means, what does it mean? I forget. I wrote it down. So, oh, uh, it is, uh, it, I guess, okay, wait. It's a Hawaiian. It's a Hawaiian. It was discovered at Hawaiian First uh, distant messenger or scout. Yes. Um, but the deal was, I guess, it's the first, it's the first object to pass through the solar system and, like, be identified as being, like, foreign to our solar system. So, yeah. and, but also it's like, yeah, it's powered by the sun with like technology that we don't have. I don't know. My husband yeah. this morning was like, hey, did you hear about Umuma? I was like, what? He's like, Umuma? <laughs> <laughs> like, no. And he's like, Google it. And I was like, I can't because you're giving me nothing to Google. So it's Umuma. like some alien Vikings. Yeah. We're it's alien Vikings. Yeah. Like an alien Viking barrel because <gasps> it just like glided all the way out to Ooh. us over time. That would be cool. When this lands on Earth, which it probably won't, but if it did, yeah, uh, would mm-hmm. you touch it? Yeah, I'd touch it. Yeah, a hundred percent. Touch the Oumuamua. Okay. <laughs> Let somebody else touch it first. hundred <laughs> percent. Make sure. It's Every safe. time I talk about aliens, I can't talk about them for too long before I get really worked up thinking about dying before we find out. <laughs> yeah, I get like really upset. Well, we were talking about this like last week with the Drake equation, just the likelihood of it even happening as long as there are humans on Earth. Is what very, if? Very okay, small. but what if death is when you break on through to the other side? <gasps> There yes, you go. like in contact. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You meet your dad oh, on a beach. <laughs> <laughs> I love how that's, that's what all. people always come up with. Is it's like you meet yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the aliens just care about you, right? Um, we should read the book of contact. Yeah, that would be because I've never read it. I've just seen the movie a gazillion yeah. times, but I would love to read. The I book. like things about contact. Things about mm-hmm. the aliens making contact. Yeah, we are all just like we'd like to be there. My recent favorite, um, this is not, it doesn't even qualify as a joke, but anytime I like pick up food that's fallen on the floor now, my line is just, we are all star stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I keep trying to bring this up on the pod, but UFO cults, which are like, there are a bunch of religions that are based around the idea that the rapture is when the aliens come. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, of course. It just makes sense. 
And they're like, well, <laughs> like people think Jesus is going to come back and it's, you know, sounds eerily similar to when the aliens mm. come. Has it? Well, yeah. that was Heaven's Gate, right? They yeah. Were, Heaven's uh, Gate. Yeah. There's one called Happy Science, I think, that's Japanese. I, there's a good Wikipedia. Which one is still around that I can join? There's a bunch. <laughs> there's a bunch. The Raelians, uh, I believe, are a UFO cult. There's Unarius, which is not technically like a a rapture cult. I love Unarius. Unarius What's was on the, the – they were on the flyer for our first live show. Um, they're now run by a woman, oh, a woman yeah. who's like the empress of aliens. They used to have a show Hell on yes. public access in L.A. all the time <laughs> that was a parade of the planets. Ooh. It was like – that Whoa. sounds so awesome. It was so oh awesome. Golly, it's all the things you love. It's parades, all, no, it really put a planets, big, it, 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 it imprinted yeah. on me very deeply because they would always show it because the Unarians just like bought up all this time on LA Public Access. And again, like that's why I love podcasting is because it feels public access-y. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, but She's I will post – Molly, you should start a UFO I call. would love to. That's yeah. what Night Call is eventually going to become, obviously. Yeah. Um, don't um. tell anyone about stage three. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we were going to talk a little bit about uh, – uh, pour some out for a, f- a friend of the podcast who is no longer with us. Yes. Lonely George, who was the last of his species of tree snail, has died. He was 14 years old. Blew my fucking mind that he was that old, to be honest with you. 14-year-old snail? Yes, a 14-year-old snail. I had a snail growing up, a pet snail. She lived, I know, poor one out again. Um, Our kindergarten class uh, had, like, tiny baby snails, and I was able to procure a tiny baby snail and brought her home. She lived for many years, but not 14. Wait, how many years did it live for? She lived until I was in like fourth grade. Whoa! Yeah, it's five years for oh a snail. Oh my God. Five years a snail in my house. Oh. My well, parents are saints. What was its name? I don't remember its name. Oh. I, I know you were hoping I would talk my salamander. Five snail. years a snail. <laughs> yeah, I did. You can erase that. I had a snail for five years is a much less problematic <laughs> way of saying that. <laughs> it's um, also interesting. Uh, so with George, they had been trying to find a mate for George for a long time, but he did. He wasn't interested, didn't want a mate. Um, he also – I think that they are neither male nor female, but they just decided that he was a uh, he. Um, his researchers well, were George, that. Well, George is an androgynous name to me. Madam George. Madam George. Georgie girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like that in the National Geographic article about George's passing, they say throughout his life – which is already already funny to me. George was a public face for the struggles <laughs> facing Hawaiian land snails. Oh, it's sad, but it's also no. immediately Aww. I think of a face of a snail, and I'm just like, no, mm, there it they're is. Cu- they can no, be they're cute. so cute, they have cute yeah. little faces, they have little eyes. Yeah. Did I talk yeah. about Aww, did I talk, George? Did I talk about banana slugs when I came back from the bay and I had seen a bunch of banana slugs? I'm always yeah. down to talk. I about like banana promised slugs. my boyfriend there would be banana slugs, and then there were, and I guess it was unusual to see them in Berkeley. Oh, really? But um, oh, I showed up for you all about them, and I learned that it's like their genitals are maybe on their head. No, because they really? yeah they and they have like cilia that are like a million tongues, um and let's make sure that that's that's for true. Sure. I don't want to to bad mouth. No, it's not bad mouthing. <laughs> but one of no. one of the things I learned is that they're all hermaphroditic. Yeah, and so they oh. all um are not a gender that we have. You know, they're like a, a, a new gender. Of so these are banana slugs. There. These are right. banana slugs, but I think a lot of slugs and snails are hermaphroditic and they re- reproduce yeah. where like everybody has both. You know what's weird is like show me a slug and I'm just never impressed. Show me a snail, any kind of snail, and I'm like, What, because yeah. it has a house? Because it has a house. <laughs> I just like wow. the slug is too wow. vulnerable for me to connect with. It's so goo. It's too gooey. It's too gooey. Well, that's what makes it. I agree with you, Tess. Right? Completely. It's different. That's what makes it. Yeah. You're like, well, you know, t- take care of it. No, not really. What do you think about like jellyfish? I don't like. Bad I don't things. care for them. I don't like. Bad. Them. Do you think yeah, herm- bad. Do you think hermit crabs are like somehow superior to regular crabs? Yeah. Whoa. Sure not. No, no. That's that's that's. I mean, up. no. Sorry. I eat crabs, but I wouldn't eat a hermit crab probably because I'm like, look at that's its right. investment that it carries around. Whoa. That crab's got its shit together. <laughs> like, that crab is. 
it's achieved is separate. You know, it's moving up in life. Like, it's I'm not going to take anything Man, away. Has good Maybe credit. Yeah. some of the crabs just can't afford shells because of a recession. They still have shells. I just think it's cool when animals accessorize and they're like really, you know, know. physically it's, attached. To but their hermit stuff. crabs are renters. They don't stay in them forever. They could. They're they're itinerant. They're rent. They're renting to own. <laughs> they're relatable. Yeah. They're relatable. This crabs. is not related, but my mom saw a raccoon on her porch yesterday just like peel and eat a mandarin and i was like oh, no I love that. that's crazy i love it wow. yeah so we have rachel on today to talk to her not only because wait, what was our what was our line about you you're a great writer and a, a great, great co-worker, co-worker and a great friend <laughs> But um, also because you have an abundance of ghost stories Mm -hmm. and you are here to share them with us and we are here to receive them (laughs) and think about them. Uh, So, yeah, give us some background. What what was this this haunted house and uh, what was your relationship to it? So the ghost stories are mostly all related, sort of in one long story. I'll tell I'll tell it medium length. I've told this so many times I have, like, versions. <laughs> um, so the haunted house is my grandparents' house, uh, which is uh, in suburban Illinois, where I spent a lot of time growing up. Uh, I, I slept there on a lot of weekends, and so did my siblings, and we were there all the time. This big spooky house with, like, a ton of weird rooms and weird balconies, and it was just, like, a creepy, bizarre house. Do you know um, when it was built? I think it was built, I mean, I feel like it's at least 100 years old, but I know they they remodeled it in, like, a weird 70s way, which made it even creepier. Nice. <laughs> like, a lot of orange carpeting and stuff. Yeah. Um, also, I almost died there a different time. Or my cousin almost died there a different time by my hand, but that's a different story. Whoa. Um, <laughs> like, by accident. Okay. We decided we would try to be Mary Poppins and uh, umbrella off the balcony. <laughs> and it didn't go well, <laughs> and it was my fault. <laughs> No one died. I saved her by gripping her arms and holding her up the, on the balcony. So oh I guess gosh. I saved her life, really. That feels like something out of the new Mary Poppins. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like- um, but anyway, so this all started when I was maybe seven years old. Um, I woke up in the middle of the night. I was kind of sick, so I was having like a fevery evening. And I woke up in the middle of the night, and I remember hearing the piano playing. They had a piano downstairs, and I remember thinking that it was my grandpa or my dad because they both played, and I was so pissed off. And I kind of walked into the hallway, and then it kept playing, and I realized, like, it was 1 in the morning. There was no way they were playing the piano. And got really scared and ran back to my room and kind of convinced myself that I was dreaming. I told my parents and grandparents about it the next day, and they were like, you definitely dreamed that. And I kind of, like, gaslit myself into believing that uh-huh. I dreamed it. I was like, no. <laughs> and then a few years later, my brother was there alone with my baby sister. I think he was babysitting. And he was in the basement, and he heard the piano playing, like, one note over and over again above him and called my grandparents and made them come home. So th- a couple of things like that happened. Our parents were like, you guys are imagining it, mm-hmm. your kids, whatever. No one kind of took us seriously. So then in high school, I met my best friend. She, so she kind of realized this connection earlier than I didn't, didn't tell me for a few years because she knew I'd be freaked out. <laughs> um, she realized that her – let me see if I can get this right. Her great-grandpa or her step-grandpa, her step-grandpa, grew up in the house next door to that house when he was growing up and had, like, crazy stories about it that he had told her about the family that lived in that, in my grandparents' house. Uh Uh-huh. So she heard all these stories and, like, knew it was about the family that lived in in my grandparents' house but didn't tell me because she knew I was there a lot and didn't want to freak me out. Uh A few years go by. She's like, okay, I have to tell you this story that I know. So she tells me the following story, which is there was this family that lived there. Uh, The dad was this prominent surgeon and and he and the mom were both addicted to some drug that he got at the hospital. I don't know which one. Probably, like, opioids or something. Mm -hmm. And they had a daughter, and they were very obsessed with her being, like, a piano prodigy. Like, they wanted her to play the piano and be really good. And so the grandpa was friends with the daughter. My friend's grandpa was friends Mm -hmm. with his daughter. Mm -hmm. And they would play, and then she would get called inside, and you'd hear her, like, playing the piano and crying and being abused and being yelled at. Um, And then one day, the dad uh, OD'd, and the mom, a week later, killed herself. And then the daughter got, like, shipped off somewhere and then came back eventually back to the house and was, I think, was, like, 18 years old and had, like, a carny boyfriend and a monkey that she treated like a baby. (laughs) What? (laughs) Are you for real? (laughs) So this is the story she tells me. (laughs) That was some unexpected. Yeah. So, so... 
the way she told it was that the daughter eventually died in my grandparents' house. So that's the ver- the version we were working under for mm-hmm. a really long time. Mm-hmm. So I told my grandparents the story. They were like, yeah, we actually heard that. Like, that all checks out. And I was like, holy shit. Okay. But still, my, gra- my parents and my grandparents didn't believe us. Yeah. A little more time goes by. Um, and then I'm at college. I come home. And my grandparents were like, okay, we have something to tell you. While you were at college, we both woke <laughs> up at four in the morning and we heard the piano playing. Like, it woke both of us out of sleep. Uh. Um and obviously nobody else is there. Mm-hmm. My sister was staying over one night. She was going downstairs in the middle of the night for some reason, and she heard it from the top of the stairs playing, and she called me, and I was at college. She was crying. And she was like, I'm hearing the piano. And I said, why are you crying? And she said, I'm really excited. <laughs> she was like, this is the coolest thing ever. She was just like, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> Finally it happened yeah. to me. Wow. And, and there was a bunch of other like little things that happened, like, this bedroom that we used to all stay in, I used to feel it shaking in the middle of the night. Um, and my sister would then later stay in it and she would feel it shaking in the middle of the night. And my littlest sister, who's 15, said she when she was a kid she was playing there with one of her friends and she looked up the stairs and saw a woman standing there, like dressed in all black or something, and her friend saw it too. And then they both kind of circled back to see if they if that woman was there and she wasn't. Uh-huh. So there's just a bunch of weird shit like yeah. that. This is like the baseline story. The the next thing that happened, I'll make it short, but um, I when I went home like six months ago, I decided to do some research because I'd Googled these, this family over and over and never been able to find anything about them, not even obituaries. Mm-hmm. I went to the library. I like met with this historian who worked at the library. Did you go to like, like, like the actual movie? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I did. Yes. Wow. I went into the microfiche, and I and I it took me so long; it was so hard to find. And finally, I found these obits for both of the parents with the same names that I'd heard, and they were very sketchy. Like it didn't say a cause of death; it didn't say anything. It was just like one week the dad died, the next week the mom died, and then there's a picture of the daughter in the yearbook, and she looked really miserable. It's like all these 1950s cheerful girls, uh-huh. and she's like morose in the background. It's really creepy. Oh. And then I found all these other crazy details, like that there was money hidden in the walls and all. there was like all these recurring news stories about it. So the craziest thing was I told the historian this story and she was like, most people come in here with a crazy story and it's not true. She's like, this is one of the only times I've been able to find yeah. like full evidence for what someone is talking Whoa. about. Um, so basically we've all heard the piano playing. My dad actually separately saw a young girl walking towards him at one point, like nearby the house and that no one else saw. Whoa. So we've all had weird experiences, um, but we can't, we all thought it was the young girl who was the ghost, but then the historian told me she couldn't find an obit for the girl. So we think she might still be alive. What? Oh. Yeah. What? So I'm trying to find her now. We have now. to find out. We have to <laughs> find out. Like, yeah. the mystery. I know. <laughs> Wait, I have a question. Yeah. Is it always just the same note over and over or sometimes is someone playing like a song? So I've heard a song, my brother heard a note, and I think my sister heard a song. What song? I don't remember what my parents, I don't remember, oh my God. and I don't remember what my parents heard or my grandparents heard. Um, Do you say a note? Do you remember how it went? Like the Eyes Wide no. Shut music? Ding. Oh my God, that Ding. would be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Just, it's just kind of ominous and creepy, but we don't think the ghost is bad because obviously nothing bad has happened while we've all been going in and out of that house for like 25 right, years. Right, you've also haven't just gotten it, rid of the piano. Right. Right. But also the the attachment to the piano seems negative if yeah. it was like a thing that she was being forced well, to do. Well, unless she's alive and it's the mom. We think it might be the mom now. Oh, oh my God. What if you're and the then, daughter? <laughs> oh, my God. It's me. <laughs> you're a ghost. Suddenly, I, suddenly my skin crumbles well, off. that's like in the Christopher oh Pike novel version. Right. Uh, or did anyone read Down a Dark Hall, I think it's called? I don't remember. It's a really good mm, YA thanks. horror book that I was into about like a bunch of girls at a boarding school who are all like forced to do different talents and then they realize they've all been sleepwalking and like channel they're being used to channel different great artists. So one of them is like she wakes up playing the piano and it's because she's being used to like channel the ghost of like Mozart to write new music. It's a good oh, <laughs> I wish that was happening to it's me. A good book. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, uh, sign me wait, up. Wait, I have Ghost, an idea. Possess me. Rachel, you've got to get your mm-hmm. grandparents to to get a medium. Like you have to go Ooh. full I, seance in this. I think. I tried. So I t- I actually held a lot of seances in their house as a child. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> I was like the head of the seance committee in my family. I just force everyone to have seances all the time. I was a spooky kid, so that didn't help. Yeah. Any of it. <laughs> Um, like obsessed with graveyards and death, but um, but like I, 
so I've, I've floated the idea of a medium past them and they're not into it. I think they just don't want to – they don't really like talking about it and they're not really into the whole right. – they kind of don't believe it even yeah. though everyone has heard it. They're yeah. like, oh, it's energy. And I'm like, well, that's the same thing. Well, it's also like – I mean, I can kind of understand that if it's your home because it's like – I feel like it's one of these things where the more you buy into it – or not necessarily buy into it, like, with money, like, with a medium, but, like, yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, the more you acknowledge that this is, like, an ongoing thing, the more I feel like I would just, like, imagine more things happening. Totally, Because yeah. it's this ongoing situation that I've now diagnosed within my house. It feels easier. I mean, even when people are, like, straight up, do you for sure believe a ghost? I'm like, well, how the fuck do I know? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'll tell you the evidence and you tell me. Like, yeah. what else could it Maybe be? it's I, a I really talented raccoon coming in and practicing a piano. <laughs> and peeling <laughs> a mandarin. Peeling a mandarin. <laughs> yes, maybe. It's possible. Oh, man. You should be so lucky. Yeah. I just feel like it's, it's definitely up. something that we don't have an explanation for that we can put any kind of, like, neat. Yeah. You know, there's no real explanation for it. It's something yeah. that, just this murky, weird mystery that... I really enjoy. I was just going to say, how much time do you spend, like, thinking about this and looking into it? Because honestly, if it were me, I would spend 24 hours a day just Googling (laughs) these people and trying to get to the bottom of it. When I let myself, I do that. Like, I, when I was home and I was doing all that research, I was, I was, like, texting my family every five minutes for, like, a week. And they were like, okay, please stop. (laughs) Um, But so when I, when I have time and I have the inclination, I get really deep into it. But then I kind of have to step back and be like, okay, there's, like, a million people with this girl's name in in America. We don't even know who she married. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really hard to find her because she's, like, gone off the grid, basically. Or she completely changed her name. But I'm obsessed with the idea of finding her, and I really want to. So she came back <laughs> – well, she came back when she was 18, you said? Or she, like – did she finish high school there? I think she – I think she, like, went off somewhere. Like, oh. I, or she finished high school. All I know is that she had a monkey as a baby. That's all I know. Um, gotta, I don't know exactly where she got the monkey. find the monkey. <laughs> she sowed her oats. Yeah, we got to find that monkey. The monkey knows all the secrets. Maybe the monkey lives in the house and is playing the piano. Oh, maybe. Wait a second. Still having an old ass monkey. People right. who treat but, like, monkeys you like babies are a bugaboo of mine. What if mine, there's like a phantom say. of the opera <laughs> monkey really living like in the basement and like coming up <laughs> like a hundred year old yeah, monkey? And it like comes up occasionally to play the piano. My symphony. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be a really exciting <laughs> explanation. <laughs> I feel like I may have seen you play this piano perhaps on social media. Is that possible? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Around. My well, not me. I don't play the piano, but my my grandparents and my sisters and my dad all play. And so it is the same one that they had. They they it's no, a, it's not the same. It's piano. not okay. No, it's my grandparents' piano that okay. they bought. I want to know if the piano's playing. If you go look at the piano, do you think it looks like one of those player pianos where the like keys are depressing, piano. or is it like a a <laughs> different like the noise isn't coming from that piano? It's like coming from a different piano. I'm never going to stop I, thinking about this. By the way, I know I. I don't think it's coming. I don't from necessarily think it's coming from the piano. I does, think it doesn't sound like a piano downstairs playing. It's well, like, it does, but it. Do, I I can't tell you if it's like coming from that room. It just right. sounds like it's downstairs, it's and right. maybe their piano was in the same spot. Huh. But I don't. I don't think that literally like someone is plonking on the piano. Right. Right. It doesn't sound that. No. Like it's on the same. Plane it's more. Necessarily. It's a different dimension. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. In it's another the past dimension. overlapping with the present. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is like overall like a positive thing in your oh, yeah. childhood like yeah i think of like my neighbor totoro and they're like yay we live in a haunted house <laughs> like they're so stoked about it just like, um, i loved it i was like let's go to grandma's all the time yeah. like, i loved it and i loved sleeping there and i would freak myself out i had a brief period in high school when i got really scared i think this was after i heard the story from my friend and I would run past the piano when I came over. Like, I couldn't look at it, even though I don't know what, like, I would have seen. But okay. I had, like, a weird period where I would, like, put my hand over my eye. Um, <laughs> but then I got back into it again. I like that you were a little re- Wednesday Adams, so you were, like, yeah. sweet. Owning it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was obsessed. I, I asked my dad now, I'm like, weren't you ever, like, worried that I was so obsessed with death and that you, I would just go sit in cemeteries? He was like... Um, no. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Your dad seemed like such a good sport about yeah. all of this. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I like, I remember wishing that I lived in a haunted house when I, we moved houses when I, I think before I was in third grade. 
And I think I had kind of figured out, I don't know if it was told to me, but I knew that the previous owner of the house had been like an old man, like a widower, and he had most likely died in the house. Um, And so I I loved to kind of spook myself. There was like a weird crawl space in the attic, and I would like poke my head in and and freak (laughs) myself out. We would have been friends. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But I was like, there's nothing interesting there. It was just like, I don't know. It was, there was nothing haunted about it. I mean, everything feels a little bit like dank and haunted in the Pacific Northwest, mm-hmm. but uh, but there was no actual ghost activity. I keep saying, like, I would, if, if show me show me any paranormal activity. Show me and a I, ghost. I would love to see it. Show me a ghost. Show me a ghost. I do um, believe, though, that, like, you have to, I mean, that whole thing about you have to kind of be open to it. Mm-hmm. I agree. Like, I, I think because I was so into that as a kid, yeah. I was kind of I was a bit of a portal. I was yeah. like the girl from Poltergeist, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Putting my hands on the TV. Yeah, on the piano. Yeah. I also lived um, on a haunted street. I am now. Your street ooh, is haunted? Calling. No, not my street now, but the street that I lived on until I was five, which is like down the street from where we record this podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Sierra Bonita in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Um, I like. F- is that haunted? Yeah, I like found out as an adult that it's like famously haunted. What do you mean? Um, there's supposedly like a like a haunted stagecoach goes down it. Really? I think I learned about it actually Whoa. from Less Than Zero <gasps> because he talks about Wait. it in Less Than Zero. But it also comes yeah. up in a lot of like California ghost history books that like Sierra. No, I know about this. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like, I I used to ride my bike up Sierra Bonita, and then I think I I and I used to this again. We're revealing stuff about stages in our life. I used to keep a copy of Less Than Zero on my nightstand. Uh, <laughs> It's okay. We just like okay. read, read, read a page of it like before going to sleep every night. But I do remember. I think that yeah, that 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 all makes it sense. Out. Yeah, I do remember. But hearing yeah, something it also about. you see it in actual like California ghost history books, mm-hmm. which I also yeah. read a little bit of. Um, but they also in Mulholland Drive. I think the apartment complex that they live on is on Sierra Bonita. Oh. It's the is it's it? called like the Sierra Bonita Apartments or something, which I thought was a fun a fun touch. It's haunted. Yeah. Uh, also, all of Hollywood yeah, good is haunted. Choice. It's mad haunted. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of haunting yeah. going on. I live really close to. There's like this haunted house with like a torture dungeon that I pass sometimes. Oh and I'm yeah. Just like, what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just like I don't go think on. I'm go current in there. one. Was it like Don Simpson's the, house? It's the Black Dahlia house. Oh, the Black Dahlia. House. Oh. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. But I'm not into it because I'm like afraid of it. But, oh. You know. I've been to. Th- I've been there. I I won't do it, man. I went there as a kid once. Again, I didn't know it was haunted. My brother's friend lived there, and we picked him up from a sleepover. And it's the weirdest house because it's like you're talking about the one on Franklin, right? Yeah, it's yeah. built by Frank Lloyd Wright Jr. Yeah, and it's called like the Shark House or the I thought Jaws that was house. a Soden House. Or Soden House. S-O-D-N, I heard it's maybe? called the yeah. people call it the Jaws House because it looks like a shark. It looks like a Jaws. Yeah, it's terrifying. It's scary little. looking. Yeah, and then l- sort of recently it came out that it was like where the surgeon lived, who mm-hmm. was probably the Black Dahlia killer. But when I went there to pick him up from the sleepover, it was like it's this house that has this giant outdoor patio in the middle, this like large open space, like with an like atrium a, type thing, like an atrium with like a pond and stuff. And I just remember Ooh. being like, "This is the creepiest place I've ever been." Right? Yeah. And like my brother was talking about sleeping over there and like having to get up and use the bathroom at night, being like very scary. Yeah. And then uh, again later, vindicated. I'm, this is yeah. different from the Ennis house, right? Yeah, it's different. But it looks a lot. It looks kind well, of stylish. Frank Lloyd Wright like Jr. It. built a bunch of kind of Frank Lloyd Wright knockoffs, you know, that mm-hmm. are that are good. But uh, this one just looks like Legos. It yeah. looks like it's been built with Legos. We'll take a picture of it. Can, yeah. Can you can you Airbnb it? Well, somebody was saying <laughs> like, actually, I did a podcast. I did the Sup Doc, which is a documentary <laughs> podcast, she's down the hill so from there, and they were saying that like. Somebody had bought it and then was using it as an event space and that all the neighbors were mad because they were constantly – somebody bought it for like a weed, a weed startup or something. Oh, my God. It looks like a weed yeah. startup. Yeah. Like, That's probably don't... its destiny. But that but is bad like juju haunted, for your, your startup. You're haunted. Yeah. Like a bunch of really stoned people in a murder house. But it's also great. No, Maybe they no. sold haunted weed. Maybe the weed got ghosts in it. Ooh, Again, with I love the jewel, that idea. Right? Maybe the Black Dahlia is a strain of weed. That makes you I go love insane. Go sweet. <laughs> I've literally never seen this. Can you see it from the street? Yeah. yeah. 
I'll tell you, I'll post a picture. It's really scary looking. No, I'm no. I, I mean, I'm looking at it right now, but I'm yeah. like, I've never seen this before. It, for a while, Whoa. it was really overgrown. It was on the market like two years ago, I think, and it it had um like a bunch of kind of landscaping that had gone nuts in front, so you couldn't really see it. And then they ripped out all the landscaping yeah. and they did this like really cool landscaping, but then. It just like it's a very strange looking house. Yeah. So you just are it's like, yeah, it looks like a haunted house. It looks very haunted. Uh, my whole thing with houses is that I get like I just get vibes, but I don't think I have a very good like spiritual read. So I'm always like, oh, if you sleep on a level that's below street level, you know, if you have to walk down to go to your bedroom, you'll get depressed. And I stand by this. <laughs> Oh. I think it's huh. Wait, it's in, in specific houses or any house? Any house where it's like an upside down floor plan where the bedrooms or a bedroom are like below the main floor. I feel oh. strong. Wait, I agree. Depressed. Right? I totally because agree. Because you have the weight of your house on you while you yeah, sleep. Yeah, on you. That's crazy. No, it's yes. true. I, I am also... <laughs> I'm also a big vibe person. Like, if I walk into a house or a restaurant, I can. I'm instantly like, I want to kill myself. I have to leave. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. yeah. An, oh, I have that <laughs> all the time with places. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are places where I'm just like, I know I'm supposed to like meet somebody for dinner here, right. but like maybe we can go someplace else. Yeah, maybe or, not. Yeah. Or, like, I walked out things. of so many restaurants. I'm like the worst high maintenance bitch a lot. I'm like, I can't eat in here. I'll, I will die. But yeah. you have so much credibility as a haunting expert. You could just yeah, tell everybody like, so no, much. no, this place is haunted. We don't want to go here. Like, <laughs> It's true. <laughs> We're like, this place isn't haunted um, enough. We should go to the more haunted place. I also place. feel like eating in a haunted place is like somehow worse than just being in a haunted place. Yeah. 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 Because you're involved in too many bodily. Subway. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Night call listeners, if you have ever eaten in a haunted place <laughs> or if you have ever gotten immediate bad vibes <laughs> from a restaurant or bar or, or public business, <laughs> please give us a night call at 1240 night. Or a night email at nightcallpodcast at gmail.com. I know you guys are laughing, but I'm dead serious. You got to call that number if that's true. No. If you've eaten food in no, a haunted No, seriously, place, I want to know. Yeah. Also, also, name names. Name fucking name names. names. We want to know. I'm not endorsing the <laughs> phrase name names on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> name, but, ghosts. name ghosts. Uh, name ghosts. Uh, only. Name ghosts. Don't shame ghosts. No, never Just, shame like, ghosts. Just introduce us to them. We would yeah. like to meet them. <laughs> Uh, so we have a night email this week, uh, very dutifully following up on our request for uh, emails and calls about not the desert, but dessert. <laughs> um, and this comes to us from at Bordeaux Blues, who has asked to be uh, identified by his Twitter handle. And that's good because uh, I don't think I can pronounce his name, although I am familiar with him from Twitter. So here is Bordeaux Blues. Hello, dear night call crew. I really wanted to ask a question after listening to the latest episode, but since my only desert experience as a kid from Sweden is from my mother's hometown in Anatolia, and the snowy hills up north aren't sufficiently desert-like, maybe asking about desserts is more my lane this time around. And since the first dessert that always comes to mind for me is baklava, I think all I can ask is, what is your favorite foreign dessert dish, as in an non-American pastry or something in that general area? A non-American pastry? Good question. Uh, thank you. This is a very good question, and 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 um, the 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 caller emailer is from Sweden, uh, and this just immediately made me think of the Swedish princess cake from Great British Bake Off. Are you guys familiar? <laughs> well, with the show, familiar yeah. with the show. Um, I will say that like most of the things on Great British Bake Off look very disgusting. <laughs> it was. The, I agree. Is the princess oh, cake like the like million layer cake? It's, yeah, it's Love it's those. like got a zillion steps and it's but it's a dome and it has a marzipan outer layer. It, it actually looks, looks like it would beautiful. be really delicious. I don't know if it's I would green. enjoy eating it. I'm not like a super big yeah. cake person. I'm gonna come out hard here yeah. and say that. Me too, Molly. I'm with I you. I like pie. I prefer pie. I like a. I like there to be. Usually, uh, why not both? Boston cream all. pie again. Boston cream pie, best of both worlds. You not guys. foreign, not foreign. No, no, but but I'm just saying pie versus not cake. Foreign. Um, the thing I've gotten super into in the past couple of years are choco pies, which are a Korean version of moon pies, which moon are an pies, American yeah. thing. But it's like one of those things where somebody like does a cover version and it's better than the original. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just like really good. They're not like a pastry per se, though. They're more of like a snack cake. Um, but a like, snack cake can be a dessert. They're like little chocolate discs. 
Um, and they're delicious. And I recommend them. Um, I haven't had the choco pies, I don't think. I, I feel like I've had versions of it. I, If we're talking about Asian pastries or like, I, I don't, I, this isn't a favorite, but I just love the idea of it. Um, there's like a very like everywhere type of cake in Japan called the Castella cake, which is like a weird kind of Portuguese cake that's been turned into a Japanese cake. Um, and people give them as gifts. Like they're, it's like, it's basically like a pound cake. Uh, but it comes like in a, a really fancy cake. box. I'll, I'll go with the Yeah, I mean, cake. but it's, it's super basic. But the thing about the Castella cake is like, well, one, they cut because it's like it's Japanese and they put as much packaging on as, as possible. A lot of times they'll be cut already in individual slices with like pieces of paper or something in between them, like per, these perfect little slices. Um, and also because of the way that the climate is in Japan, a lot of times they vaguely taste of mildew. Like this is just a feature, not a bug. <laughs> uh, that th- they kind of taste like mildew. Uh, and also, each town I think has like their own Castella cake, but they all taste the same, as far as I can oh, tell. I love that. It's though. just like a s- weird kind of like cake of the mind. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Castella I like cake the ceremonial uh, mind cake. For that's sure. basically it. I like yeah. cakes as art objects. I mean, I think on the Great British Bake Off, that comes up a lot. And on all the pastry yeah. decorating shows, it's like, I just find frosting disgusting. So you're not oh, into the yeah. peppermint high hat cake so that I'm fond of. I'm, yeah. I'm very like prejudiced against a lot of Midwestern foods, it turns out. Yeah. Because of... Uh, wow, rude. rude. <laughs> it's very rude. I'm sorry. I I like a rustic tart, y'all. I like some Alice Waters. How Californian of you. I know. But... I'm trying to think like what's the most the most like fun pie. I'm gonna say for my foreign dessert, I'm gonna stand for tiramisu. Ooh, tiramisu Ooh. was the first dessert I truly enjoyed. I think tiramisu would definitely be served at Romay Memories, Molly and Mai's uh, '90s theme. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, and Black Forest cake. Which... I don't like Black Forest. Yeah, cake. I don't really like fruit and chocolate. There mixed. was a Black Forest ice cream of like a Black Forest cake themed ice cream at an ice cream place I went all the time called Swenson's. Oh as a yeah, kid that I like. That sounds think great. About all the time. You know what ice cream I think about all the time? It's not an ice cream. It's a gelato. Haagen Dazs had this hazelnut gelato. Oh, yeah. I... It was the best thing that I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> and then they. Like like Nutella? Yeah, no, it was not at all chocolatey. It was like, it, it was just so good. And the texture was like a little bit, it was a very good gelato texture. It was very soft and scoopable, even right from the freezer. And it was like fluffy and the, the <laughs> flavor was like so good. And they they got rid of it, you guys. Oh, man. And I've been wow. looking, it's like the Entenmann's Blackout I got cake. into it the Choco Pies that. because there was a place in the Second Street Mall in Little Tokyo that had like a Choco Pie ice cream Ooh. with the chopped up Choco Pies. And it was like, it's like a moon pie, but Korean. And yeah. so I got the ice cream and that was the gateway to getting into the More Choco, Choco Pies. pies. Tres, tres leches, I'm going to also throw out. It's good. Oh, it it yeah. honestly can be too wet. It really depends on wow, the This from yeah. Tiramisu, Lady Tiramisu saying a cake is tiramisu. too wet. Tiramisu. Tiramisu. <laughs> what are you tiramisu. doing? Tiramisu. 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 Um, I mean, tres leches is like literally, isn't it like three it's milks? It's three milks. It's, yeah. But honestly, sometimes. <laughs> All the milks. I was getting I was getting that three milk cake and then eventually I was like, it's just so wet. I love that it's I wet. I couldn't get with wow. it anymore. My favorite is pavlova. Oh, I love pavlova. pavlova. Which is apparently Australian. Yes, it's what? so good. Ooh, I never had that. Pavlova. It's like a egg white fluffy Ooh. thing full of fruit which I know it sounds like not that great but no, it's really I like good. I like anything that's fluffy like for a cake it's yeah. like an yeah. unbaked like fluffy meringue. shell yeah or yes. not unbaked that's a but really it's like good a slightly way. soft meringue huh. with fruit it's yeah. so yeah. good you guys where do you my friend made it for us when we were all really stoned in the Poconos one Ooh. so I ha- I'm very very um like I'm not to be trusted on this <laughs> but it was like the best thing I've ever eaten <laughs> did you go wow. to any yeah. did you go to any haunted resorts in the Poconos um, Did you go to the one where you can you can sleep in the big like glass champagne glass? <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, we want to do no. that oh is my God. a night call dream destination. That should be night yeah. call camp. It's camp like, night yeah. call. It's again? in the Poconos in the champagne I don't glass. Know. It's, oh, it's, Sybaris. Is that is that right? what it is? Because no. they 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 advertise on the subway. They're like, mm. come have your romantic getaway in this like nasty ass like champagne glass bed. Whoa. Uh, yeah, well, because I, I am the ghost, I am always in a haunted getaway. <laughs> 
I think we can't improve from there. Yeah. Uh, if you've got any amazing. any opinions about cakes, if you've been to the Poconos, also, yeah, <laughs> if, you, if you've slept in a champagne Pocono glass stories. the size of a campaign <laughs> ad, as they say. <laughs> Isn't that a line? What? <laughs> it's, what? A, it's a line from a song. <laughs> a champagne glass. The, the size song. of a campaign head, I think. Oh, uh, yes. Of Otherwise, course. now uh, it is. Uh, Pretty sure I'm quoting. <laughs> Give us a call or an email. one 246 night or at nightcallpodcast at gmail.com. Follow us everywhere you want to follow us. Twitter, nightcallpod, Facebook, nightcallpodcast, Instagram, nightcallpodcast. Um, and uh, once again, we've got a show coming up, a, a DJ show, not a podcast show, but it, it should be fun. You can come out. We'll play some tunes. We'll have some Boston cream pies. Uh, it's going to be a fun night. And February 5th some live, at Gold Diggers And some live Angeles. magic from Emma, who's amazing. Oh, yeah, our, magic. Our night call adjunct magician. February 5th at Gold Diggers in Los Angeles. Uh, that's it for Night Call this week. Thank you, Rachel, for being Thank here. You. Thank you, Rachel. Rachel. Thank you for the ghost stories. <laughs> Anytime. Uh, we'll see everybody next week. Bye. 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 Bye.